I'm Mike, and today Mike checks greens, particularly the amazing, awesome, scientifically documented, absurd power of green leafy vegetables. Yes. I might check one, two, one, two, kale, chard, spinach, one, two. I know, most of my videos are about some food that could kill you today, so I thought I'd switch it up to something that could save your life equally as urgent this time. And a lot of people don't eat enough greens, whether they're vegan or not. I don't eat enough greens or as much as I would want to. So let's get some motivation together. Here we go. Everybody likes seeing, so let's kick it off with eyesight with glaucoma. Glaucoma is when the nerve to your eye becomes damaged and it is a leading cause of blindness. And about 2% of the US population has glaucoma by age 40. As this study observed though, in their subjects, quote, consumption of more than one serving per week of green collards or kale decreased the odds of having glaucoma by 57% compared to consuming less than one serving per month. Yes, if you consume greens less than one serving per month, you probably have a lot of other bad things going on, but let's see if there is a cause behind this observation. It appears that it could be the antioxidants in dark leafy greens, particularly lutein and zeaxanthin, which make up a large portion of the pigment in your eye and can actually protect your nerve from radiation, from light, and neutralize harmful reactive oxygen species, which are free radicals. For zeaxanthins in the realm of commonly eaten foods, kale seems to be the winner. One cup of cooked kale has 11 to 20 milligrams of zeaxanthin, spinach has 6 to 12, and broccoli has around 3. And you know all those raw foodists who are like, I changed my eye color by going raw. After just 12 days on a raw food diet, you too can transform into a lemur. Bro. Well, these antioxidant pigments might actually explain why, because with increased intake of them, they can measure higher levels in the eye. So eat more of these pigments, get more pigments in your eye, and more pigment means more color, so a massive increase in lutein or zeaxanthin, whether from cooked foods or not, could theoretically do it. All right, next subject, everybody loves their brain. So let's look at cognitive functioning. Rush University's memory and aging project followed nearly 1,000 elderly people giving them 19 tests on cognition every single year. And they found that those who ate one to two servings of green leafies per day had the cognitive ability of a person 11 years younger than those who didn't eat greens regularly. Yeah, if you're basically not eating greens, you're probably doing a lot of other things wrong as well, but they did control for a very long list of variables. This benefit was likely driven by the high antioxidant content of greens, but also in how they can help ensure a good blood supply into old age because of their benefits on artery function. Greens help our arteries through the nitrate, nitrate, nitric oxide pathway in which you eat nitrates in greens and other vegetables, and then your saliva turns them into nitrite, and then the gastric juices, the acid in your stomach, turns that into nitric oxide, which is then absorbed in your intestines. Nitric oxide is like a dream for our arteries. It is a gas that is released by the cells on the walls inside of our arteries, which keeps things flowing. It's like the air on your air hockey table. Imagine playing air hockey with no air. You can still play it, but it'd be really rough and unlubricated. That's a preview of atherosclerosis for you. Here's Dr. Esselstyn, who is famous for his studies in which he reverses heart disease in his patients using a whole food vegan diet, explaining the benefits of nitric oxide. A wonderful level of nitric oxide whew, keeps your blood flowing smoothly, like Teflon rather than Velcro. Nitric oxide is the strongest dilator of blood vessels in the body. You climb stairs, the arteries to your heart dilate. The arteries to your legs dilate. Nitric oxide. Nitric oxide will also prevent inflammation from forming in the wall of your artery, keep you from getting arteries that are stiff, keep you from getting high blood pressure, hypertension. Nitric oxide will prevent migration of smooth muscle from the wall of the artery from growing into the plaque. Nitric oxide in plentiful amounts protects you from ever developing blockages or plaque. So it's no wonder why this study said that, quote, Dietary nitrate has been demonstrated to have a range of beneficial vascular effects, including reducing blood pressure, inhibiting platelet aggregation, preserving or improving endothelial function, enhancing exercise performance in healthy individuals and patients with peripheral arterial disease. 
So you're probably wondering, what foods have the highest nitrates? Greens seem to win across the board here. Out of regularly eaten foods, arugula is the highest at 480 milligrams per 100 grams. Rhubarb is the second at 280. Cilantro is at 250. Butterleaf lettuce or Boston lettuce is at 200. Spring green mix is at 190. Basil, 180. And beets, yeah, they're a root, are at 110. And you can get higher than that with beet juice, but it could cause a blood sugar spike. And if you're really serious about green, or have advanced cardiovascular disease, you can follow Esselstyn's regime, which is six fists worth of steamed dark leafy greens a day. I'm greedy for the health of my, health of my patients. So my cardiac patients are asked, at least for the first three to six months, six times a day, I want a green leafy vegetable after it's been cooked for five and a half to six minutes, the size of my fist. I want, a long, I want it alongside your breakfast cereal. I want another one at mid-morning. I want it again with your lunch and sandwich. I want it again at mid-afternoon. I want it again at dinner time. And I just adore it when you have that evening snack of kale. Okay, next up is antioxidants. I have a whole video on antioxidants if you wanna look at the basic mechanics of it. But for now, I will just say that antioxidants fight oxidative stress and oxidative stress is implicated in every major disease. I wanna start by talking about one antioxidant that you may have heard of. It turns sunlight into energy. Yes, it's chlorophyll. Green leafies, of course, have a lot of chlorophyll and chlorophyll acts almost as a linebacker fighting DNA damage. This study looked at chlorophyll versus the DNA shredding potent carcinogen known as aflatoxin. Here's the blood level of aflatoxin without chlorophyll and bam, there it is with spinach chlorophyll. It buffers the toxins right down. Being injected with aflatoxin, these test subjects were quite courageous or desperate drug addicts waiting for that participation paycheck. See, we, we don't need animal testing after all. Now to an antioxidant you probably haven't heard of called ubiquinol, which we actually make ourselves. As this study mentions, the problem is, quote, when ubiquinol is used as an antioxidant, it is oxidized into ubiquinone, its useless cousin. So we ourselves need to convert it back into an antioxidant. And here's the crazy part. You can turn ubiquinone back into ubiquinol with the familiar combination of chlorophyll and sunlight as that same study goes on to demonstrate. They say, yes, we get enough light through our skin to perform this reaction in our bodies. Maybe this is how our levels of ubiquinol stay up. And this is one reason why green leafy vegetables are awesome. Direct quote from the literature. I know what you're thinking. Did we just photosynthesize? Am I a plant? Let's take a micro tangent in the words of these researchers, quote, we propose that through consumption of plant chlorophyll pigments, animals too are able to derive energy directly from sunlight. Just basically like not very much at all, but still cool. Now moving on to depression, a much suggested topic from this study. Those who ate greens more than three times a week had 60% less depression than those who didn't eat greens regularly. Again, what about all these other variables? Well, here are the ones they controlled for, a massive list. So why might this happen? You are probably familiar with neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine. Well, there is a compound in your brain that breaks down these happiness chemicals. It's called sadotonin. I'm just kidding. It's called monoamine oxidase, which is much less memorable. But certain chemicals can block monoamine oxidase and quote, monoamine oxidase inhibition results in elevated neurotransmitters. So monoamine oxidase is a target for treatment of depression. Here's the good news. Kale is one of the many vegetables with the antioxidant quercetin, which in addition to being antiviral, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and anti-allergenic, it can cross the blood-brain barrier and inhibit monoamine oxidase. But based off the USDA's number, kale is actually just a pretty good source. Way better source would be lovage, which is a green leafy vegetable, and also capers, which is technically a little flower. They are super high. Another one that is also quite high is dock, which is a green leafy vegetable, which you might think is a weed in your garden. I know it's in my garden. So it's no surprise that this study concludes that 
A diet rich in fruits and vegetables with quercetin every day may provide sufficient active compound to decrease slightly the baseline activity of monoamine oxidase in the brain and hence slow the breakdown of neurotransmitters. So greens aren't exactly a hard drug, but eat them every day and they could make you a bit happier. All right, moving on quickly to diabetes. This meta-analysis studying a total of 200,000 people found that one and a half servings of green leafy vegetables a day reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes by 14%. No surprise there, but what about dying? This study followed 60,000 people looking at six healthy lifestyle factors like not currently smoking, not heavy drinking, walking an hour or more per day, sleeping six and a half to 7.4 hours per day, eating green leafy vegetables almost daily, and a normal BMI. Their findings, quote, if subjects managed to improve their lifestyle by even just one variable, 24.7% of deaths among men and 18.5% among women can be prevented. So skipping out on your green leafy vegetables could be the death of you. Now that is shock journalism. I just want to say that there are many more benefits to green leafy vegetables that I didn't have time to cover in this video, but I hope it motivated you to eat more. It definitely motivated me to eat more researching all this. Now I know what you're probably thinking, greens are expensive. Are you just going to abandon me with all this information and no means of eating as many greens as I want? My answer is grow your own greens. Go plant some greens in your garden. Don't have a garden? Go find a community garden plot. Do you live in the tundra? Sprout some microgreens in your window. Don't have a window? I don't know what, I don't know. Cold frames, there you go, cold frames. Growing Your Greens with John Kohler is a great resource for this, so I will link his channel in the description below. In conclusion, let's eat more greens together, let's make a deal to do that, because they can potentially help your brain, your arteries, and your eyes, and also the antioxidants can prevent disease, and they can help you potentially live longer and possibly be happier while doing so. All right, that's it for today. Plants are pretty cool. Eat some more greens. Feel free to like. I know it's repetitive, but it helps. And also subscribe if you haven't. And thanks for watching. The champ, green leafy vegetables. Arugula, arugula. Better butter leaf, better butter. Butter leaf, better. Better butter leaf, mustard greens, mustard, mustard. A bite check, one, two, one, two. Kale!